Here's Hudson. He's a college teacher. It's the last day of the semester, so he has a bunch of paperwork in his office. Suddenly, someone turns off the electricity in the entire building. Hudson goes to the basement with generators. There he sees a turned-off switch and three people standing next to it. They all say they didn't touch anything, but one of them is lying. The janitor says, the lights went out when I came here to clean up. Rebecca says, I'm a new student. I got lost in the corridors and accidentally got here. And Nick says, I'm a last-year graduate. I came here to find a toy owl, a souvenir I had hidden here many years ago. Who's lying? The janitor has a bucket and a mop, so he's not lying. There's a toy owl in the corner of the room, so Nick is telling the truth. Rebecca is lying. It's the end of the semester, so she can't be new at this time. One of Hudson's students, Paul, has a crush on another student named Liza. Once he got a note from her saying she liked him. So Paul decides to write her back and ask her out. Unfortunately, he doesn't remember which desk is Liza's. There are two possibilities. Can you guess which desk is the one he needs? If you remember, the note was written in green ink. There's a similar green pen lying on the desk on the right. So this is most likely Liza's desk. After classes, Hudson is leaving the building and faces a group of his students. They ask him to take their picture. Can you spot an odd detail in the resulting shot? This guy here has three hands. Liza and Paul are having fun outside during their winter break. Liza is learning how to skate on the lake, and Paul is skiing in the forest. Who's not smart? Liza. The ice on the lake is cracking, and there's no one around to help her. Unlucky Liza. Paul, meanwhile, returns to the dorm. He's starving, so he opens the fridge that he shares with his roommate Nick. Right away, Paul begins to yell at his roommate. Nick, you stole my food again! Nick replies, you're a liar, I didn't. Paul says, well, I have proof. I took a picture of our fridge before leaving. Can you tell who's lying by just looking at these two images? Take a closer look. The shelves are signed. These two shelves are Nick's and the other two Paul's. These three items disappeared from Paul's shelves. This means that the liar is Nick and it's time for a new roommate. Meanwhile, Liza and Paul are having a date tonight. Apparently, the lady on the lake survived the cracking ice. But Liza's dorm is situated on the opposite side of this maze. Can you help Paul pass through this labyrinth to meet his date? Here is the only way out. The college dean, Nina, hires a handyman to transform the area around the campus. That's what she says. Your task is to put seven benches. I will triple your paycheck if you find a way to put exactly six rows of benches in a straight line. Also, each row should have three benches in particular. Can you help the handyman accomplish this task? He should put three benches as the vertices of an equal triangle. Three more benches should be put at the center of each side of triangle. And the last bench should be at the center. The handyman gets to work and goes to the storage room to grab some tools. Can you find two identical items?
Hey, here they are. The handyman is bored, so he starts a quiz game. He keeps asking the same question to every student he meets. But each time, the answer is different. Can you guess the question? The handyman's question is, how are you doing? Hudson's teenage daughter, Jill, failed a test. So he makes her stay at home and study instead of going to a friend's birthday party. Meanwhile, Nina's teenage daughter, Jules, got sick. So she spends the entire day in her bedroom instead of going to the movies. Both daughters come down to dinner at 7 o'clock. Which parent was deceived? Nina. Take a look at the window. It's raining heavily. Jules has wet hair and dirty water on the edges of her jeans. It means she was outside. Uh Uh-oh. Liar. The next morning, Hudson and Nina both wake up earlier to prepare breakfast for their families. Nina is making sandwiches. Meanwhile, Hudson is making eggs with bacon. Who's wrong? Hudson, oops, he forgot to turn on the stove. Hudson is walking to work through his favorite park and sees this scene. Can you spot what's wrong in this picture? There are two suns in the sky. Uh Uh-oh, Tatooine. Hudson arrives at his class and starts with a witty riddle. Can you tell me which part of London exists in France as well? The correct answer is the letter N. A huge drama is taking place in a diner next to the college campus. The owner of this place screams, where's my money? It's 30 minutes till the end of the working day, but there's no money in the cash register. Three employees have been working today, but they swear that they haven't touched the money. They say there have been no customers today. The boss doesn't believe them. He studies the employees trying to spot the thief. Liza is wearing a pair of stylish sunglasses and brandy clothes. Mike is also wearing some costly designer clothes and an expensive phone. Robin is wearing a regular dress and fake jewelry. Who took the money? Nobody. Take a look at the sign on the door. It says, open. That means that people on the street saw the closed sign on the other side. That's why nobody entered and the cash register remained empty. Hudson finds a secret hallway in the basement of the college building. He decides to explore it and finds an old treasure chest. But as soon as he touches it, three zombie pirates come out and grab him. One of them says, Hey, we've been protecting this gold for 500 years. You can't take it. Hudson notices that something's wrong with these guys. Can you figure out what exactly? Well, they seem fake. This zombie is wearing sneakers. The second one has a phone in his pocket. And the third zombie has a price tag attached to his saber. Ah, busted! Molly is very nervous. She met a great guy online, and today they're having their first offline date. They have never seen the pictures of each other. Their date will take place in an old part of the campus at night. Molly arrives at the meeting point and sees two guys. The first one says, It's a weird place for a date, but I'm glad to see you. And the second guy says, It's me! I couldn't wait to see you! You're even more pretty than your photos. One of them is Molly's date, while the other one, a dangerous criminal. Can you guess who is who?
It's the second guy who is dangerous. He mentioned photos, but Molly didn't send her online crush any pictures of herself. Therefore, the first guy is her date. Molly and her date want to go to a local nightclub, but the guard can't let them in without a password. He gives the guys a hint. The more places I go, the less you can see. Who am I? Darkness is the password. It's a beautiful weekend day. Nina is working in her garden. Suddenly, someone attacks her from behind and she faints. Later that day, she gets better and talks to the police. Nina suspects one of her neighbors. Some of them don't really like her. Officers question three suspects. Bill says, I've been planting trees with my daughter all day long. Sabrina says, I was just peacefully watering my gorgeous flowers and continued to do so. Luke says, I rarely leave my house, so I don't even know this woman. Who's suspicious? Sabrina's garden hose isn't even connected to the water source. It's just lying on the ground. Therefore, her story is fake. I know something that will wake your brain up better and faster than coffee. Yep, it's time to find your magnifying glass. Oh my God. Look at this picture attentively. What's wrong here? Each of these four people has a slice of pizza in their hands, but only three pieces are missing from the pizza box. You have three jars that are all mislabeled. One jar contains apples, another contains oranges, and the third jar contains a mixture of both apples and oranges. Mm. You are allowed to pick as many fruits as you want from each jar to fix the labels on them. What is the minimum number of fruits that you have to pick and from which jars to correctly label them? Yeah. Let's look at this scenario. You pick a fruit from the jar labeled apples and oranges, and you get an apple. That means that the jar should be labeled apples. Now, the jar labeled oranges has to be labeled apples and oranges. As it can't contain oranges, and we've already got the apples jar, a similar scenario applies if it's an orange you take out of the jar labeled apples and oranges. So, you just need to take one fruit from the jar, apples and oranges, to label all the jars correctly. A farmer once challenged an engineer, a physicist, and a mathematician to fence off the largest amount of area using the least amount of fence. Hmm. The engineer shaped his fence like a large circle and said it was the most efficient way. The physicist made a long line and said that fencing off half of Earth was the best. The mathematician laughed at them and showed his design, <laughs> which beat the others. What did he do? The mathematician made a small circular fence around himself and declared himself to be on the outside. Every day after work, Jack arrived at the train station at 5 p.m. His wife left home in her car to meet him there at exactly 5 p.m., picked him up and drove him home. One day, Jack got to the station an hour early and started walking home. He was walking until his wife picked him up along the way. They got home 30 minutes earlier than usual. How long was he walking? The best way to think about this problem is to consider it from the perspective of the wife. Her round trip was decreased by 30 minutes, which means each leg of her trip was decreased by 15 minutes. It means that Jack must have been walking for 45 minutes. Logan is a special agent who's trying to catch a notorious villain. After long months of investigation, he finds the criminal's headquarters. But the door is locked, which is not a surprise, really. Logan sees a screen next to the entrance. He touches it, and the display lights up. Hmm, it must be a riddle. 
and our special agent needs to solve it to get inside. Hmm. Add one line to make it right. 9.50 equals I-O-I-O-I-O. Logan cracks the puzzle in no time. What's the answer? Nine point five zero equals I O T O I O. The door opens and the man steps into a dark corridor. After walking for some time, Logan notices another door. Ah, a code lock again. The man also spots a calendar hanging on the wall. At the bottom, there are several letters M F W. After connecting the dots, the special agent figures out the code. What is it? It's 153. The letters stand for the days of the week, Monday, Friday, and Wednesday. Monday is the first day, Friday is the fifth, and Wednesday is the third one. Oh, yeah. Look at these two families. Which one is fake? What do you think? Well, the family on the right has weird dietary habits. They allow their son to eat the whole cake on his own. But maybe they just don't care about healthy eating. The family on the left, though, seems to be perfectly fine. But have you spotted a USB port covered by the necklace the mother of the family is wearing? She's a robot, and all this family thing is just a joke. Now, look at these prisoners. Who is more likely to escape? Gotcha! Neither of them! The one on the right will be stopped by the prison guard, while the one on the left will end up face to face with these pretty unfriendly dogs. How about these girls? Which one lacks common sense? <laughs> that was another tricky question. Both of them aren't the brightest bulbs in the chandelier. The one on the left is going to post a photo of her credit card on her social media. And the one on the right is going to share the details of her ID and plane ticket with her followers. That's incredibly unsafe. Oh my god! It was the first day of school when the principal's wallet went missing. There were three suspects, the gardener, the math teacher, and the coach. Oh no! Here's what they said. The gardener was mowing the front lawn. The math teacher was checking the surprise test he'd given his students. And the coach was meeting new people who wanted to join the school's soccer team. Who took the wallet? It was the math teacher. No one gives surprise tests on the first day of school. Look at these women. Can you figure out which one isn't pregnant? It's the woman on the right. Her belly is strangely shaped, and something seems to be moving under her clothes. Ugh, creepy. One day, the emperor asked his general what he should choose if he was offered either justice or a lot of gold. I'd choose the gold. The general answered without hesitation. The emperor was taken aback. Oh. I would have been disappointed even if this was the choice of a servant, the emperor said. But coming from you, it's not only disappointing, but also shocking and sad. But the general justified his answer to the enraged and hurt emperor without a problem. What did he say? He said that people asked for what they didn't have. Under your majesty's rule, he then added, justice is available to everybody. But I am a spendthrift and always short of money. That's why I said I would choose the gold. The answer pleased the emperor, and his respect for the general was restored. The police arrived at a ski resort early in the morning. At night, someone attacked the manager of the hotel, and he was taken to a hospital, still unconscious. The police suspected three people, Lara, James, and Arthur, who had arrived the day before. The officers inspected their rooms, and here's what they found. 
Look at these things attentively and try to understand who attacked the manager. It was Arthur. Look, he doesn't have any warm clothing, which means he didn't come for skiing. Oh, no. Allison is a big boss in an international company. One day, she's hurrying to an important meeting when she notices the documents she needs haven't been printed out. But she's asked at least three of her subordinates to do it. Ian says he's just returned from the supermarket because they've run out of coffee beans. Robert claims he's been terribly busy drafting a new contract. And Alice answers she's been in the kitchen preparing snacks and making coffee for the meeting. Mm. Who's actually forgotten about the task and is making up excuses at the last moment? It's Alice. There's no coffee in the office. Then how could she make it? Rich businessman Mr. Hudson had a serious disease and was staying at the best hospital in the city. He was treated with pills invented by a scientist working in that hospital. Mr. Hudson was feeling better and better and was getting ready to be discharged. But then, one morning, he was found in critical condition. The police had four suspects, the cleaner, the businessman's nurse, his assistant, and the scientist. The cleaner said that Mr. Hudson liked when his room was tidy, so she came every day to clean it. The nurse said that she gave Mr. Hudson's injections every morning, and they had even become friends. The scientist was very upset. His disease was complicated, but we've made such progress. And today, this happened. And the assistant answered that her boss asked her to bring his favorite sweets every day. And she did just that. Can you figure out who caused the worsening of Mr. Hudson's condition? It was the nurse. Mr. Hudson was treated with special pills. What injections is she talking about? What? Harrison was walking home when someone threw something at him and knocked the guy out. When he came round, he found himself in a room with four doors and a tiny window. Harrison opened the window, but it was too small for him to squeeze through. Mm. Suddenly, the guy spotted a piece of paper lying on the floor. It was a note that said, Only one door leads outside. The other three doors don't lead anywhere. You can try to open just one door and only once. If you don't succeed, all of them will be locked forever. Oh. Harrison thought for a while and made the right choice. Yeah. How did he figure out which door was the one he needed? He opened the window. This created a draft. The guy checked the keyholes and felt some cool air coming from one of them. It was the door to freedom. Detective Sheldon Copper was resting at a beach resort when an unpleasant accident happened there. Someone pushed elderly Mrs. Stevenson into the swimming pool when there was no one around. But this someone didn't know the lady was once the best swimmer at her university and she never stopped practicing. So it wasn't difficult for her to cross the swimming pool and get out of it at the other side. Sheldon asked the lady if she had seen the attacker. She didn't but she was sure it was someone who knew she'd just received a huge inheritance. Hmm. The detective needed to talk to three people. They were Mrs. Stevenson's son, Terry, her granddaughter, Gloria, and her niece, Judy. Terry said, These days, I've been very busy. Something urgent came up at work. I don't even have time to leave my room to go for breakfast or dinner. Hmm. Gloria asked Sheldon to keep her secret. She was seeing a waiter she had met at a beach cafe. If her relatives found out, they would be furious. Ah. And Judy told Sheldon she'd taken a car to go shopping in the city center. Who's lying? <laughs> Terry. The man looks sunburned. But how can it be if he hasn't left his room for days? <laughs> Jaden bought a beautiful ring for his girlfriend. He wanted to propose to her at the weekend. He left the ring on his desk at home and went to work. But when he got back in the evening, he didn't find the ring. Oh, no. Only his three sisters were at home that day, and none of them liked his girlfriend. He went to question each of them. Mia was in her room. 
she said she'd spent the whole day there painting the walls. Emily was in the kitchen. She answered that she'd been cooking a birthday cake for her friend. And the youngest, Nora, was in the garden. She said she'd been planting roses. It didn't take Jaden long to figure out who had taken the ring. Do you know who it was? It was Nora. She looks too tidy for a person who was supposedly spending the entire day in the garden. What? Plus, she doesn't have any gardening tools. The best player of Julian's volleyball team disappeared right before the game. Julian's main suspects were three players from the rival team. Jackson said, I've just returned from the gym. I was warming up before the competition. Leo had to pick up his wife and daughter from the hospital, and Ryan claimed he'd fractured his leg, and the team doctor was giving him a massage. Yeah. Who's behind the player's disappearance? It's Ryan. Getting a massage when your leg is broken? Really? Uh Can you figure out the answer to this rebus riddle? The answer is summary. Morgana is a young witch. She enters her new school. This academy is for mystical beings only. Classmates welcome Morgana with a cake but one of the students is an imposter. Can you guess who? This guy is the only one who looks like a human, and since this school doesn't accept humans, he doesn't belong here. Morgana is checking in at the student dormitory. She can choose one of three roommates. The first option is Wanda. She's a werewolf. The second choice is Elle. She's a vampire. And this is Zelda. She's also a witch. Can you help Morgana make the right choice? Wanda's room is too cluttered and all the textiles are torn. It will be uncomfortable to live with her. And Zelda has a book called How to Curse Your Roommate on her shelf. That's why Morgana should choose L. Morgana enters the library and explores the shelves with books and golden cups. She heard rumors about a secret passage to a hidden part of the library. Can you help Morgana find it? All the stuff on this wall is equally covered with dust and spiderwebs. But take a closer look at this golden cup. According to the date engraving, it's the oldest cup on the shelf, but it still looks shinier than the others. Suspicious. So Morgana should try to move it. A secret door opens, and Morgana enters a dark hallway. She walks it through and finds three sculptures, but only one of them isn't fake. Can you spot which one? The second statue is too transparent. It's a ghost. And the third statue is moving. It's a guy pretending to be a statue. So the correct answer is the first statue. Morgana asks the statue guy, what is this place? But he refuses to answer until she solves his riddle. I speak without a mouth and hear without ears. I have no body, but I come alive with the wind. What am I? Morgana failed to solve this mystery. What about you? The correct answer is an echo. The statue guy puts a spell on Morgana and she falls asleep. After a while, she wakes up in a cage. He says, I'll give you one more chance to escape. Let's play a game. There are three levers. You can only choose one. If you push the first lever, the cage will fill with water in seconds. The second lever will bring two hungry tigers to your cage. And if you push the third lever, the cage will get filled with mutant mosquitoes. It's impossible to survive after their bite. 
Which lever should Morgana choose? She should choose the first lever. Water will simply spill through the bars of the cage. Morgana is attending a zombie biology class. Her teacher, Lady Jessica, shows the class three zombies and says, By the way, which one of these is my ex-boyfriend? Can you guess who? Take a look at Lady Jessica's tattoo. Now we know that her boyfriend has the name that starts with K. The second zombie has a name tag on his leg, according to which his name is Kai. Therefore, he's the ex-boyfriend. Morgana goes to the academy canteen and meets three guys, Magnus, Merlin, and Drake. Everyone's talking about the upcoming school prom. The next day, she receives messages from all three guys. Magnus says, Hey beauty, you're invited. My elf will deliver you an evening gown that matches my suit perfectly. Meet me in the main hall at 8 p.m. Merlin says, Hey, would you like to go to the prom with me? I heard you're an awful dancer just like me. We can meet up early and rehearse so we don't embarrass ourselves in public. And Drake says, Morgana, I think you're my soulmate. Let's skip the prom and have dinner at my lake house. I have a huge collection of movies. Who should Morgana choose? Magnus didn't even ask if Morgana wanted to go with him. He's too selfish. And she barely knows Drake, so it might be dangerous to go to his place. So, Morgana should choose Merlin. Morgana goes to the local store to find the perfect dress, but all the dresses are sold out. She has to choose from these four. Can you see any difference between them? The third dress has a slightly different lace decor. In the evening, Morgana is walking to the dormitory through the garden. She finds her roommate, Elle, lying unconscious in rose bushes. Teachers conclude that someone had put a sleeping curse on her. The only way to help her is to find the wizard and make him reverse the spell. Morgana questions three witnesses. The cook says, I was cleaning the kitchen and I was about to leave after that. The librarian says, Nah, I was reading a book. It was so interesting. I spent all day indoors and I didn't pay any attention to the outer world. And the gardener says, I was watering lilies in the opposite corner of the garden. I didn't see anything. Who cursed L? It was the librarian. She got her shoes dirty in the mud while putting the spell on L in the garden. Finally, Morgana goes to the prom with Merlin. They take part in a dancing contest, but fail to make it to the final. These couples are the top three finalists. Suddenly, the winning couple turns into frogs. The local doctor checks the frogs and finds out that someone had poisoned them with a magic potion. But the dancers ate the same food and drank the same drinks as everyone else at the party. Can you guess what happened here? They danced with a rose in their teeth, remember? It was drenched in the potion. Merlin offers Morgana to have a romantic tour around his great-grandfather's castle. He says, This place is abandoned. No one has entered it for 100 years. Wow, let's explore it. Morgana finds four odd details in the living room. Can you see them too? There's a laptop on the table covered with dust. There were no such laptops 100 years ago. Also, the flowers in this vase are fresh. There's a color photo in a frame on the wall. And this old beautiful clock has 13 divisions, not 12. Merlin and Morgana go to the basement. 
According to rumors, a very powerful magic book is hidden here. They find a large stone box, but unfortunately, it's locked. Do you have any clue how to open it? This odd boss relief with magical runes is a combination lock. The flower has six petals, which means we need to match it with a six-pointed star. The clover has four petals, just like this square has four sides. And finally, the star has five rays, just like a human hand has five fingers. And voila! Merlin opens the book. Suddenly, he yells, it's a fake! Someone sneaked the original ahead of us! How did he know? There's a modern barcode on the cover of this book! Morgana and Merlin find a note in the fake book. Can you help them crack this hint? The paper is purple, and the rebus means corridor, so they should search a purple corridor. Morgana and Merlin wander around and find the purple corridor. There are three doors leading to the original magic book, but each way hides some danger. There are multiple hungry piranhas behind the first door, there's a family of vampires behind the second door, and there's an evil witcher behind the third door. Which way should they choose? Morgana and Merlin walk through the first door. Piranhas can't survive without water, so they're not dangerous. Finally, the guys find the book, but the ghost of its author yells, This book is too precious. I can't give it away to the wrong person. So you should first solve my riddle. I build castles. I tear down mountains. I make some men blind. I help others to see. What am I? The correct answer is Sam.